Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day, there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And we're going to have such a great discussion today because we're going to be talking about how to really start a business and why, more importantly, why we need to be doing this. And so please join me in welcoming LaShawn Smith to our program today. Welcome, LaShawn. How are you doing? Hey, Deb, I am fantastic. Uh, you know, I always love speaking with folks with high energy where we can like really get into a, a topic that I'm passionate about. So looking forward to the conversation. I know we are going to have such a great time. Well, let me tell people a little bit about you and then we'll jump into this. So LaShawn Smith is a business creator and software developer. He helps people predictably navigate their entrepreneurial journey. After spending over a decade as a software executive at these two little companies called Amazon and Microsoft, he uncovered patterns to use process as a tool to win in business more often. He's applied his toolkit to start new businesses, produce feature films, and turn around struggling businesses. He's consulted with a wide range of clients, including Electronic Arts, Sony, T-Mobile, Target, Tom Shoes, and Warner Brothers Studios. His expertise in artificial intelligence, behavioral economics, and systems engineering creates a unique talent stack for solving many of today's most challenging business problems. He's been fortunate to help launch products that have found their way into the hands of millions of people. He is also the author of Value-Based Business Design. So again, LaShawn, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You know, when I hear all of that um, I don't just think about some of the wins that sometimes are accidental. You know, we have to not pat ourselves on the back. Sometimes right. things work out uh, in spite of, mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, some of the things we do. But I really am reminded of, you know, all the things that didn't work. Right. And uh, one of the things I'd love to kick off that's not in that list okay. of things that you uh, you you read off. Uh, years ago, I invested and started a salad shop. So, uh, you know, just a, a retail salad okay. store. Okay, you go and you get a salad. Um, okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, very, as people would say, pedestrian um, in my world. And I was very passionate about, I'm going to have the best branding. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have great workflow. I'm going to have mm -hmm. the best apps for people to order on their lunch so they don't have to wait in line. Like I, mm -hmm. I had done all of these things. Mm -hmm. And one of my proudest moments is uh, taking a screen capture of the Yelp profile of that business that says permanently closed. Oh, no. And, <laughs> and the reason is... You know, so much of what we learn is is not just what's working, but mm -hmm. how to repeat right. uh, what's working. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, finding repeatable processes can come from both the things that were successful, mm -hmm. but also the things that maybe financially didn't mm -hmm. work out the way you want it, but it helps you build a system. Mm -hmm. So hopefully today we can talk more about systems oriented thinking. Mm -hmm. And even if someone says like, well, I don't like very you know, structured, mm -hmm. you know, thinking, I don't like to do a bunch of writing, I'm not a technical mm -hmm. person, you know, have no fear, mm -hmm. um, there is still a path for you. But I really mm -hmm. think that's a, kind of a really important part of folks mm -hmm. toolkit. Right, I love it. Well, tell us a little bit more about your background, because I love your website, because it provides a lot of details. So folks, check out LaShawn.com, because it's got this great background. And one thing we didn't mention was that you were in the Navy. So thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Um, but, uh, you know, tell us a little bit more it is how it is that you got to where you are today. Well, if folks are familiar with the concept, uh, it's a Japanese concept called Ikigai. You've mm -hmm. probably seen one of these pictures on the internet mm -hmm. where <clears throat> it's a bunch of Venn diagrams. And it's mm -hmm. like, what are you good at? What do you uh, enjoy doing? Mm -hmm. What does the world value enough to pay you? And mm -hmm. you're trying to get those circles to overlap as much as right. possible. And for me, I had no strategy. Mm -hmm. I just start doing things mm -hmm. around uh, my interest. Mm -hmm. And 
I got lucky that some of the things I was very interested in Mm -hmm. um, became things that, you know, folks will pay for. Mm -hmm. Uh, But specifically two things. Number one, I was uh, really passionate about media production Mm -hmm. and that's taken all sorts of formats from, you know, from music to Mm -hmm. films, uh, you know, to, you know, working in video games, like all sorts of of angles. Mm -hmm. And the other piece was, uh, you know, using the computer to create worlds. Now, Mm -hmm. when I say create worlds, you know, this can be creating business software. This can be making, you know, applications for consumers. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just this magic tool where you type on a keyboard and you can bring all sorts of ideas to life. Mm -hmm. Now, along that way, you know, I was a kid when I started these two kind Mm -hmm. of focus areas. I had no idea that these were jobs, that Mm -hmm. this is something I could, you know, you know, make money from. What I did figure out very early on, though, is outside of those two things is If I took control of sales, Mm -hmm. um, I could go make money. And it was mind boggling to me. Um, I started selling candy as Mm -hmm. a young kid. And, uh, you know, I think I've I've met other folks who have done something similar, Mm -hmm. but I would go um, get wholesale candy Mm -hmm. um, through um, a family friend and I would go sell that on the playground. Mm -hmm. And I would, you know, the basic business model is, you know, sell for a dollar or buy for a dollar, sell Mm -hmm. for two. And um, through that process, I really, and this was like, again, accidental. Mm -hmm. um, I learned, all right, number one, you have to focus on what you can control mm-hmm. if you want to be as successful in mm-hmm. business. Right. And then number two, you really have to listen to the customer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and many times when folks are starting a business, they don't, you know, they hear that type of mm-hmm. feedback, but they don't really take it to heart. Right. And I believe that that is at the core of how we build mm-hmm. predictable businesses. Right. So since then, you know, young LaShawn selling candy uh, at the playground, I've just been, as I like to say, tasting the buffet moving around the world, trying different things, Mm -hmm. not getting too caught up in, you know, a certain career path, not Mm -hmm. getting too caught up in a title and just say, when this doesn't feel enjoyable Mm -hmm. anymore, go, you know, to the next season Mm -hmm. of your professional journey. Mm -hmm. And that's culminated into a lot of interesting experiences Mm -hmm. that seem like super random, Mm -hmm. but the, the thread has really been three things, you know, kind of media software Mm -hmm. and staying true to myself. Mm -hmm. I love it. You know, and, and there's so many things in there to 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 start talking about. I you know and, and I like I said I read your bio and so I love that you say you have to listen to the customer because you had your candy that you sold that you loved and yes. then all of a sudden they didn't want it anymore. And exactly. you were like put, 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 and you were crushed, right? But then you went, well what do they want? And you know how many times as as a business owner have we created something, product, service, whatever, and it's our baby, right? It's right. Like, and we've nurtured it. And when someone doesn't love it, we really are crushed. Um, you know, and, and it, so it, it is, you know, how do you look at that and go, okay, what's next? So, you know, I love that you talk about this because in many cases, what people do is they give up. You know, they didn't right. love our baby. Therefore, I'm I'm just not going to do this anymore. And you know, and, and we need to remember, I, you know, years, years ago when I was in college, um, I had a, uh, uh, English class and got, you know, got back my paper and it had all this red ink all over it. And I was just like, oh my God, he didn't like my words. And, <laughs> but everybody did. I mean, you know, he loved his right. red pen and he told us, he said, they are words. They're not your babies. Mm. And I mean, that just really struck me because as much as we invested in it, Mm-hmm. It still was not the end of the world when it wasn't yes. loved. And I think that yes. is kind of one of the, the biggest things to, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a business person to know is, you know, not everybody's going to love your baby. A hundred percent. And once you give yourself uh, both, both the reminder and the permission that when um, someone wants something different, mm-hmm. that is kind of your, you know, that's your job, mm-hmm. right? right. Uh, you know, I'm not a believer that, the customer always knows mm-hmm. what they, um, right. you mm-hmm. know, what 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 should solve their problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I do believe they they are almost always communicating. Um, you know what? I guess I'll say, yeah. What is the um, 
what their their desire is, their mm -hmm. their their mm -hmm. target outcome. So, and the reason I was splitting hairs there is sometimes we hear like the customer is always right. Right. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know that the customer is always right mm -hmm. in knowing how to solve the problem, mm -hmm. but the customer is right in kind of voicing what their target, their destination, right. their outcome, their desire, mm -hmm. their needs, their wants. Mm -hmm. And if we if we look at business through the lens mm -hmm. of uh, you know a great quote from. Uh, Peter Drucker, he says, the purpose of business is to create and keep a customer. Mm -hmm. And it's just really simple. Like we right. don't need complicated MBA mm -hmm. language to explain that. Mm -hmm. And so that means that you have to give them what they want. Now, mm -hmm. many times we create, you know, ideas and businesses that are from a place of our own experiences. Mm -hmm. and, and that can be a great narrative, mm -hmm. a way to bring people in. Um, but you still have to do all of this work. So let's mm -hmm. say, Deb, you and I um, are going to start a cupcake company and like, Ooh. I make the best cupcakes ever. And you're like, LaShawn, I know how to market and sell these things. Like we need to I can open eat cupcakes. Like, I mean, <laughs> people love cupcakes. And you know, it's easy to start romanticizing the idea to mm -hmm. visualize what's the name, what's right. the logo, what mm -hmm. would the retail mm -hmm. space, if we're going to deliver these, what's the mm -hmm. box look like? What are our flavors? Is it going to be like crumble cookie? And mm -hmm. every week we're going to have like a new flavor. Like mm -hmm. it's easy to right. go through that. We're going to be I on get... Cupcake Wars. You know, there the you TV go. Show. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. We go from here to here. Um, right. <laughs> and I love dreaming. Right. Mm -hmm. um, like I get so much energy from that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you got to move into execution. Right. There's a there's a book by Jim Collins, and I love just the title is powerful. Uh, he says, um, uh, think big, start small, scale fast. Mm -hmm. And the punchline there is like, let's have an amazing vision. Mm -hmm. But then you need to go get started at a very small level. Mm -hmm. And then you go figure out how to make right. that more repeatable mm -hmm. and, and scale up. And through that journey, where I feel many folks you know, kind of fall down is they don't listen to the customer mm -hmm. going back to kind of our, our main point here. And they say, I make cupcakes that have these ingredients. And mm -hmm. someone says, well, um, do you have any vegan cupcakes? No. Um, do you have, you have, you have cupcakes with bacon mm -hmm. on top? No. Do you have smaller cupcakes that, you know, for my kids, do you have mm -hmm. cupcakes with no sugar? Like, like, and this is what's called the N plus one problem. So mm -hmm. if we go to back, you know, like eighth grade math, mm -hmm. N equals some population mm -hmm. of options. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you go to a place and they sell, like we sell one burger, mm -hmm. uh, you know, N equals one. Right. Uh, the N plus one problem is that in today's world, there is whatever number you're starting with. Mm -hmm. And then your customers are always going to add one. They're mm -hmm. going to add, they're always going to be adding right. extra Can you options. do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus mm -hmm. one, plus one, plus one. Mm -hmm. And so what I believe you have to do is create a system to figure out uh, how you will accommodate all of these variations mm -hmm. if you're going to, um, you know, kind of accommodate mm -hmm. the broadest base of customers. Right. Or you have to be very intentional and mm -hmm. say, listen, we make these three cupcakes. Mm -hmm. They cost X dollars a cupcake. Mm -hmm. They're for sale Monday through Thursday. Mm -hmm. Take it or leave it. Yeah. And <laughs> I actually, mm -hmm. I actually love those types of businesses right. as well uh -huh. yeah. um, because you're 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 being very explicit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in here on the West Coast where I'm at, uh, you know, there's a brand of burgers called In and Out, mm -hmm. and they're famous for having a very limited menu. Right. Uh, they're not like a cheesecake factory where mm -hmm. you're like pages and pages mm -hmm. of all of these these items, and. What I love about that is they say, this is our promise that we're going to have this very small menu. We're going right. to do it well. Uh, we're going to be fast mm -hmm. and high quality. Uh, and so whatever it is, you're effectively making a promise mm -hmm. to your your future customers. Mm -hmm. And so where, where the danger zone is, is in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you can be successful building systems mm -hmm. to accommodate as many as possible. You can be successful, you know, successful saying this is like a really small mm -hmm. set of products or services mm -hmm. I'm going to sell. Um, but it's dangerous to kind of be in the middle and mm -hmm. say, no, we do a lot, but but only with it. Like people right. can't follow it. Oh, They're going to mm -hmm. check out. Mm -hmm. They're not going to buy our cupcakes. Mm -hmm. And me and you are going to be on the street with just like one little raggedy cupcake and right. say, it mm -hmm. was such a good idea. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just love this idea mm -hmm. of figuring out um, how you both mm -hmm. listen to your customer and then turn that feedback into experiments or right. tests to see if that feedback can mm -hmm. be turned into a product. Right. Well, and when you look at the big brands, they do focus on the one thing, um, you know, and and now it might have variations in there, um, you know, and and I mean, you look at, you know, let's let's do the big guys, Microsoft and Amazon. I mean, Amazon 
has it has grown from, as we all know, books in the garage to, you know, offering more and more and more. But it, it all still flows into the strategic. We're going to do it online. And I'm not, do, I know they had uh, stores. Do they still have some of the retail space? Because I don't think those went over as well as they thought they would. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously there is the grocery business. Uh, right. Oh, yeah. We have wild the, oats. The Amazon mm-hmm. brands. But mm-hmm. for kind of traditional brick and mortar retail, there's still experiments. There's mm-hmm. like some uh, we have uh, here in Seattle. There might be in uh, some other places mm-hmm. across the country. These uh, Amazon stores where mm-hmm. you uh, just grab all the food and they have computers right. looking mm-hmm. at you and you can walk out. So, mm-hmm. so they have these experimental investments. Mm-hmm. But most of the, the consumer retail mm-hmm. business happens online. Right. And I would say, you know, a few things from from that that aspiring entrepreneurs or mm-hmm. folks who are early in their business ownership journey mm-hmm. should remind themselves, I have to remind myself of this, is that when you're first starting off, it's easy to look at people who are winning and say, oh, that's that's what I should do. Right. Oh, we're going to do that. Mm-hmm. But Deb, to your point, um, number one, Amazon started selling a very simple thing, mm-hmm. right? And so what they picked is one channel. Their channel mm-hmm. was going to be online e-commerce, right? Mm-hmm. So when I for folks listening, the mm-hmm. channel is your sales channel. How right. are you? How do people your get product? your stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and then <clears throat> excuse me. The the magic I think of how Jeff Bezos figured out how to create Halo and go to other places mm-hmm. is not by saying we're going to start with books and then here's this other random mm-hmm. thing. Um, he he crafted a set of tenets, and I don't I'm mm-hmm. not sure exactly when this emerged uh, mm-hmm. at the company level, uh, but you know he's famous for writing these annual mm-hmm. shareholder letters that says like you know here's what we're mm-hmm. going to go chase, mm-hmm. and and somewhere along in the journey he he articulated um, these three words uh, inside of Amazon, they are called CPS, but mm-hmm. it's convenience price and selection. Mm -hmm. And the idea is people want convenience. Mm -hmm. They want a great price and they want, uh, you know, they want choice. They want Mm -hmm. to have, you know, a broad selection Mm -hmm. of products and, you know, do that through the lens of books. Mm -hmm. But once you establish and you can live up to that brand Mm -hmm. promise of, you know, convenience, Mm -hmm. price and selection. Okay. Now we could sell, you know, I think uh, at the time it was CDs or. Right. Yeah. They expanded, but it made sense. And it because was only it was, once they had it down as it to was how to those, they would do those, it. those pieces, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so often it's like, oh, I should just copy this big company. Mm-hmm. Um, typically, they've done a number of experiments mm-hmm. themselves, and they found some type of why that mm-hmm. is separate from the what. Right. And uh, you know, the journey of, of figuring out your why mm-hmm. and then validating if people will pay you for that. Mm-hmm. Um, what I love about entrepreneurship is done right. That part doesn't cost you much money. Right. And this mm-hmm. I hear this all the time mm-hmm. where folks are like, well, I'd love to start X, Y, Z business, but you know, I don't have enough money. Mm-hmm. And you know, what I tell people is, you know, given your life commitments and responsibilities, mm-hmm. you may not have enough time. Right. And then you can figure mm-hmm. out a way to like buy back mm-hmm. some of your time, mm-hmm. but you definitely have enough money. Like mm-hmm. anyone who can save up, you know, around five hundred dollars mm-hmm. right. can start the mm-hmm. customer, you know, development mm-hmm. process. And maybe we could talk a bit more about, mm-hmm. you know, what what that is. Mm-hmm. But it it's it's easy to say if I had more money, I could go I could go start my business. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you get that money wired into your bank account, mm-hmm. you're like, okay. Come on, Deb, let's open our, yep, our, our yep. cupcake We store. said when we had this number of dollars, well, we've got it. Mm-hmm. Well, now you still have to go do the process. Mm-hmm. You have to right. figure out how you're going to develop talent. Mm-hmm. You're going to figure out your marketing and your mm-hmm. sales. And like all these things still have to happen. Mm-hmm. And guess what? You can go experiment and validate those things before mm-hmm. you actually make the product right. because mm-hmm. that's the journey your customers right. are going to go through mm-hmm. as well. Right. They're not going to mm-hmm. start with your product mm-hmm. and say like, um, hey, so so where do you sell this? Like mm-hmm. by the time they get to that point, they mm-hmm. they have had so many interactions with mm-hmm. you. And so I really like the idea of start at the top of their journey mm-hmm. and then you validate all the all the pieces getting up mm-hmm. to giving them the product. Mm-hmm. And many times what I find people, you know, coming to the um conclusion of is, oh. The product I thought I wanted to sell is not the thing. We mm-hmm. thought we were going to sell cookies, but actually mm-hmm. cupcakes is the right thing. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, we're going to do small little banana bread, you mm-hmm. know, like like you'll, you'll find something right. that is different than what you imagined. Mm-hmm. And if you embrace that, mm-hmm. um, you'll you'll find, I think, success more often mm-hmm. because we rarely exactly get what the customer wants right. on the first try. Right. So how do you avoid the bright, shiny object syndrome where mm-hmm. it's, Ooh, they'll buy this. Ooh, they'll buy this. Ooh, they'll buy this. <laughs> and you just 
hop from thing to thing. You know, how do you avoid that? So you are talking to my kryptonite right now. And I <laughs> love that question. First off, for me, you know, I'll give, uh, you know, an anecdote on my experience. Mm -hmm. What I've had to do is force myself into time bound uh, windows. And mm -hmm. so um, I do less of this today because I invest more than I operate. But mm -hmm. um, through that lens, I, I, but I still do this. Like mm -hmm. I still write mm -hmm. code. I still work on projects here and there. And most of those are not for me to go launch a business. Mm -hmm. It's for me to stay sharp enough. So I understand right. like, you mm -hmm. know, how is this stuff working? Yeah, Cause it changes. Uh, mm -hmm. Exactly. But um, even through that lens, like if you saw my notes on my laptop, you're like, oh my gosh, LaShawn, please turn that off. Like you're like, like, like <laughs> you you're blinding me mm -hmm. with, with too many different things. Mm -hmm. But the way I, I kind of get that under control is I will have an idea, I go log it, mm -hmm. and I'm getting into some tactics here, mm -hmm. um, but I'll be brief. And then I say, all right, um, this one keeps coming back, right? Mm -hmm. Like I start seeing some patterns okay. or I can't you know, stop mm -hmm. thinking about mm -hmm. it. And then I say, all right, I'm gonna give myself one day Mm -hmm. And the whole day, like I clear oh, my meetings, okay, I don't okay. do anything. And I'm like this one day, I'm going to go research. Mm -hmm. I'm going to figure out, you know, what would be the first mm -hmm. thing I could experiment with? Like how, what would be the next steps if I got mm -hmm. serious about this, this mm -hmm. idea? And then from there, um, typically at the end of that day, I'm like, this isn't for me, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, rarely is it like this couldn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, but typically it's like, I don't have the level of commitment. Right. It was it fun, to but. Make this to, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it's out of my brain at that point. Mm -hmm. But then if it's like, well, there's still something here mm -hmm. and this could be hard, but like, I'm really connecting with this. Mm -hmm. Then um, I go find time to give it a week. Now okay. for people who have, you know, maybe a day job or family mm -hmm. responsibilities, mm -hmm. you can take that 40 or 50 hours mm -hmm. and try to split it across, right. you know, four weeks or eight mm -hmm. weeks or mm -hmm. what have you, but you're trying to give it about that much time. Mm -hmm. And then if that works, then I go to ni uh, 90 days. And then eventually, um, if it kind of clears all those hurdles, I mm -hmm. make a year long commitment. Okay. And so this is this kind of, you know, mm -hmm. graduating a graduated level mm -hmm. of time commitments that I've, I've found be very helpful mm -hmm. to avoid focusing on something and then like, oh, new shiny object mm -hmm. um, over here, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, a tactic that can be helpful to some mm -hmm. people um, if if uh, they they suffer from the same distractions right. I do. Mm -hmm. um, the, oh, yeah, I'm like that. I, I am the bright, shiny object squirrel person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I heard someone say a great uh, description. Entrepreneurship is a uh, proxy or an excuse to be curious, right? Like oh. if you are always mm -hmm. learning, mm -hmm. if you love to learn, mm -hmm. um, entrepreneurship is is a potentially great vehicle because mm -hmm. guaranteed you're always going to be learning. And mm -hmm. if you don't like to learn, you're going to mm -hmm. feel high anxiety and you're going to feel like you're mm -hmm. under duress mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur because mm -hmm. you're always going to be throwing something else. It's like, oh, you got to learn this thing about legal. Mm -hmm. Like you got to go hire this bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. You have to go find about this regulatory or compliance thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like even simple things. Like when I say regulatory and compliance, mm -hmm. that sounds like are you, we're not starting a healthcare business. Right. No, but let's go back. Cu cupcakes. Great Our example. cupcake business, mm -hmm. you, have, mm -hmm. you have health um, mm -hmm. situations, you know, mm -hmm. during the pandemic, there are all sorts of rules mm -hmm. you had to go comply with. Like you're always going to be tackling something new. Mm -hmm. And so I personally get dopamine, um, from learning mm -hmm. new things. And so for me, my personality is very well mm -hmm. suited to the ups and downs and the constant mm -hmm. learning of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. But, but, you know, using some of those tactics I talked about on, time boxing mm -hmm. the progression of your ideas um is one way now mm -hmm. you know again everything i share right. is a your mileage may vary asterisk mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the other piece i like to call out is sometimes um we're not holding a high enough bar for whatever product we're making oh, and so okay. to your point where we're using the new opportunity mm -hmm. as an excuse to not hold ourselves accountable mm -hmm. so maybe you know I like to say the sandwich just doesn't taste good. Mm -hmm. Maybe the cupcake's just not good, mm -hmm. right? And so, and we're like, you know what we need? We need to make cookies. And so mm -hmm. we're going to have cupcakes and cookies. And, you know, you end up with a store of like, like, what do they sell over there? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like some baked goods, but I think they start selling right. sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, And there's it's a hot really... dog that's in there somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. If you made one truly amazing cupcake. Mm -hmm. And then at some point you're like, I think we can make really, truly amazing cookies. Right. Then, then it works. But mm -hmm. most people 
are abandoning their first thing, mm-hmm. chasing the new thing because they haven't held themselves accountable mm-hmm. to really make their first thing mm-hmm. great. And that's why people don't want it. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, I feel like, you know, um, because I look at businesses for sale, uh, for acquisition, small mm-hmm. businesses mm-hmm. is where I focus. And I usually see three problems uh, in someone's business. Uh, there's a fourth that's kind of an asterisk, but that's mm-hmm. that's pretty easy to fix. Uh, the first one is the product's just not as good as the mm-hmm. the owners uh, right. think the business is. Mm-hmm. Number two, they're not doing a great job letting the world know how amazing they are if it's mm-hmm. great. Um, and then three, the people aren't bought in on the mission of where mm-hmm. this this company can go. And the asterisk, the fourth is they just have some bad processes, but mm-hmm. like that one's easy to fix. Yeah, yeah. The, mm-hmm. the, if your product just isn't good, uh, that can be a much heavier mm-hmm. lift to fix it. So anyway, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're talking, you know, uh, some of these levers. Mm-hmm. And I like to think in these systems and frameworks to say, all right, it doesn't matter if you want to go build, mm-hmm. uh, you know, some really complex, you know, solar device, mm-hmm. or you want to start a cupcake business. Mm-hmm. If you think in systems, you're going to find the problems early on. Mm-hmm. And you want to find those problems early. Mm-hmm. So you're not stressed out you know, sloop down, Mm -hmm. um, sitting on the floor in front of your refrigerator with like a pint of of Ben and Jerry's, like, Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Um, You you, you really, you know, you really Mm -hmm. want to try to, uh, you know, as the saying goes, uh, you know, pay now or pay later, you Mm -hmm. want to pay that pain as early as possible. Mm -hmm. And the folks who are winning, they just have a high appetite for Mm -hmm. staying uncomfortable. Right. So what point do you bring others in? Because, you know, especially if it's, you know, something that could be bigger, you might need an accountant, an attorney, salespeople. I mean, where or or even just, you know, a business partner, you know, back into the cupcakes, you know, you're the baker, I'm going to sell it. At what point do you bring other people in? Sure. So let's talk about both. When we say people, um, there are contractors you can bring in, there's vendors mm-hmm. you can hire, and there are employers, uh, employees that mm-hmm. you can bring on. And there's co-founders that that might be there mm-hmm. with you along the, right. the way. Maybe a venture capitalist or who knows. Yeah. And and your point there is, is a great call out. When you think about capital source and like mm-hmm. the way you will fund your business, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we'll scope it to the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, some of these things extend uh, in similar patterns elsewhere. But you you basically have a small list of ways to get money in your Mm -hmm. business. You could be, you know, a trust fund kid and Mm -hmm. you have a bunch of cash. All Mm -hmm. right. So that you you self fund. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody, you know, you have the money from whatever source. Mm -hmm. Um, Number two is you bootstrap. So as Mm -hmm. you uh, make money, you're, um, you know, use that to reinvest in the business. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, The next one is you can get uh, debt and you can get a loan. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the beauties of the Small Business Administration. SBA here in the US is once you have a proven track record that you can earn money, there are all sorts of paths for you to unlock Mm -hmm. debt. Now, I'm not a believer of taking debt when you don't know what your numbers Mm -hmm. are and you don't know how repeatable this is. If you you don't know that you can pay it back. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And how do you know if you can pay it back? It's whether or not you have enough Mm -hmm. history that says, I know how to repeat Mm -hmm. um, finding a customer, serving Mm -hmm. that customer, retaining that customer. Mm -hmm. Um, But but if you do have those things, that could be a great vehicle. And then the the last and least most common is what's called um, alternative assets. And these are, um, you know, not hedge funds. Those are people typically mm-hmm. investing in public companies, mm-hmm. but these are venture capitalists mm-hmm. or private equity companies mm-hmm. that are giving you money in exchange mm-hmm. for an ownership stake where, mm-hmm. you know, an SBA loan mm-hmm. is giving you a loan. You have to pay it back, but you still mm-hmm. own all of the company. Right. And now across all of those, those pieces, um, how fast you're expected to go changes. Mm-hmm. And so if you, um, are going to go the venture capital route, uh, you're you're going to be pushed to go very fast. Right. And so to your question, mm-hmm. you're going to have to go assemble a group of humans very mm-hmm. quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, imagine someone's going to make the next big, you know, Marvel movie and mm-hmm. they have to go cast all of these stars. Mm-hmm. They have to hire all these visual effects experts. They, they have to do all of this work. Mm-hmm. If you look at the credits, it's not uncommon for 3000 people to work on a Marvel movie. Right. Yeah. Because now, it's, it's just huge. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so imagine the HR effort to go hire 3000 mm-hmm. people. Right. Um, now, some people are employees, some people are contractors. Mm-hmm. There's right. 
you know, but like, but that whole orchestration mm -hmm. of humans is mm -hmm. a job within itself. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going down a path such as venture capital funding, mm -hmm. where you need to move quickly, mm -hmm. you're going to have to get really good at talent development and right. assessing, mm -hmm. you know, all the pieces you need. Um, if you are going to move at a slower pace, maybe you're going to bootstrap or what mm -hmm. have you, um, you can... You, you can hold off many of these types of things. Mm -hmm. But the punchline to your question is you should start hiring, and I'm going to use hiring um, as a universal mm -hmm. term, your co-founder, mm -hmm. your vendors, you know, these mm -hmm. are your bookkeepers, your lawyers, mm -hmm. or what mm -hmm. have you, um, your contractors, your employees, um, and uh, you know, obviously your co-founder, yeah, again, as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is, finding great people requires kissing a lot of frogs. Right. And so if you say, all right, LaShawn, well, I don't have the money to go hire mm -hmm. somebody right now. If you don't start the process of trying to hire somebody, you, mm -hmm. you know, like figure out like what questions do people ask when mm -hmm. they want the job? Mm -hmm. um, how do you write your job mm -hmm. descriptions? How do you think about compensation? Mm -hmm. You know, not saying like, you know, coming from a place of scarcity saying, well, mm -hmm. how much can I pay this person? Like, mm -hmm. no, that's a horrible way to think. Mm -hmm. You think, how much the, does the best person cost right. to solve mm -hmm. this, this problem? Mm -hmm. And then you got to go learn. It's called price discovery. Mm -hmm. What does it cost to go pay that person? Mm -hmm. And then once you, you figure that out, then you go start looking and say, like, mm -hmm. can I convince people mm -hmm. who are great? And if they're great, guess what? They're already at some other job doing right. great work. You got to get so, them away. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're not going to, like, hire them away in 60 days. Like, that's mm -hmm. crazy talk. And those first hires can take months. Mm -hmm. And so I look at it as, you know, it's similar to like content marketing and other types mm -hmm. of things. If you say like my business is going to have a podcast or mm -hmm. I'm going to have a social media account, you typically aren't going to get any business benefit from that in the first three, six months. Sometimes, right. you know, it takes a year, mm -hmm. year and a half. And I think talent development and your people plan can sometimes be similar. Mm -hmm. You might, it might be 12 months, 13 months before you mm -hmm. hire the first person. But if you don't start nine, you know, 10 months mm -hmm. earlier than that, then you're probably not going to find somebody mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. And so the idea that you want the cheapest person, bad idea. Mm -hmm. You want the person who's available, bad idea. Mm -hmm. You want the person that you just kind of know, um, bad idea. You, Don't you want some, hire family unless you know that they no, are going like, to like, do a fabulous job. Exactly. And how do you know that they will do a fabulous mm -hmm. job? They have a track record, right? right? Um, mm -hmm. a quick sidebar. When I interview folks, I love the behavioral method where mm -hmm. you don't ask, Hey, Deb. So listen, I'm starting a new cupcake business and uh, we're going to need a general manager mm -hmm. to go run our new location. Um, you know, could you, could you, could, mm -hmm. Those questions are kryptonite. Stay away right. from those. Because I'm going to say yes. Otherwise, yes, I'm not like, there like, talking to you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Who's going to say, well, I don't think that's really for me. Now, I have had very honest people who mm -hmm. are rock stars who say, hey, that's not my thing. Here's what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, mm -hmm. typically folks are going to say, oh, sure, I could do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I work well under yeah, pressure. And we figure we can learn. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also, I try to avoid like, uh, tell me how you deal with, you know, ambiguity. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. like, like, like. These are like like kind of fluffy things. Mm -hmm. Instead, um, behavioral interviews say, hey, Deb, tell me a time where you had to hire um, entry level workers, many of them high school and college employees um, rapidly in a 90 day period. Mm -hmm. um, and then explain that to me in mm -hmm. what's called the star for format. Tell me the situation at hand, the the task that had to be kind of, you know, kind of solve that situation, the action you specifically took, not your team, and the results or the mm -hmm. business impact that that took place. Um, and then I just let them talk, mm -hmm. right? And you're going to hear how people tackle um, their their critical thinking process. You're going to see how they storytell. You're going to hear um, a good narrative on that mm -hmm. past experience. Like you're going to hear all these things. There's going to be all these opportunities mm -hmm. to inspect and you know, mm -hmm. ask a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. And it's so much more effective than mm -hmm. asking these silly, frivolous, uh, you know, you know, tell me about a time where, you know, like, like you know, you struggled with, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, somebody who was a, a you know, challenging employee. Right. Um, the more, yeah, like this mm -hmm. doesn't get you much, but if you start, if you start listening to those, those tasks, you're like, well, mm -hmm. that's not really something I'm great at. Um, 
there are very few businesses that you can run outside of being a solopreneur. And we could talk mm-hmm. about that. I'm a, I'm a big fan of solopreneurship, mm-hmm. but there are very few businesses outside of solopreneurship that will allow you to be successful about without being great at hiring people. Mm-hmm. And so you got to get to the gym and start exercising right. your, your hiring muscle. Mm-hmm. So anyway, back to, to the topic where I feel people can get the kind of the biggest push on like when to hire who mm-hmm. when is to really understand um, what's on fire, mm-hmm. right? And what is on slow burn. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, I will find people who love to hone in on one of those. Mm-hmm. They want to focus only on the vision stuff, mm-hmm. the things that will happen in three years. Mm-hmm. And then you have other people who only want to focus on what's you know, in front of them mm-hmm. today. And a great leader, a great business owner is going to find their version of, you know, seamlessly moving between those two, right. because you got to keep both of those timelines mm-hmm. in your head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to be thinking about how are we paying the bills tomorrow and right. what are we going to be in 10, <coughs> excuse me, in yeah. 10 years. Exactly. And, and your, your, your piece there on the, you know, how we think about long-term um, planning. Mm-hmm. I don't believe someone has to say, here's the product I'm going to sell in year seven. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't, we don't know those types of Mm -hmm. things. However, the idea that you're going to build something that will be around for Mm -hmm. 10 years, Mm -hmm. for 20 years, Mm -hmm. uh, maybe 50 plus that. And, and I don't like this idea of like, you know, build hundred year companies. Mm -hmm. I believe that's an anomaly from Mm -hmm. the late 1800s and the early 1900s. And we're going to see fewer and fewer Mm -hmm. of those types of companies. But I do believe that you can build generational companies mm-hmm. that you can start and can still be alive when you retire mm-hmm. from the workforce. Right. Um, and so through that lens, it's a lot easier to say, all right, am I making this decision so I can go make mm-hmm. an extra hundred thousand dollars this mm-hmm. month? Or am I making this decision so I can go build a company that's going to be more resilient, right. that can survive if I mm-hmm. need to, you know, take a break mm-hmm. or or if I get sick. And when you start thinking through that lens, you have no choice but to say, you know what? I got to go hire the best people I can mm-hmm. find. Not that I can afford, mm-hmm. the best people I can find. Mm-hmm. Because if you aren't great at selling, not mm-hmm. only to your customers, mm-hmm. but potentially investors, right. uh, maybe to a bank that lends you money, to mm-hmm. your co-founder who joins you if you have one of those, um, but specifically in this context to your employees, mm-hmm. if you can't convince them to quit their job and join you in your mission, mm-hmm. like I question if you're going to mm-hmm. be able to convince right. customers to actually buy your right. product, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, And it's just a muscle you got to exercise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you have to have all of those ducks in a row before you ever approach people. I mean, you know, we, we couldn't go out to hire people and just say, we're, we're going to do good cupcakes. Yes. You know, 100%. we, yeah, we have to have much more in there. And, and obviously it depends on who you're talking to and what you're asking them kind of that part. But, but, you know, we, we see this, I see this all the time. Um, You know, people are starting crowdfunding, right. Yes. And, and it will have like two sentences, you know, we want to do this. Um, You know, they, they, you know, uh, I love the ones uh, when they want uh, is particularly uh, like, television programs and, and movies. We, yeah. you know, when uh, I, I love Veronica Mars, I love that program. And, you know, so they did a crowdfunding thing and basically it was, we want to raise enough money to have another, uh, to have a movie, I think was what they had wanted. So, you know, it was like, well, that sounds fun. I might give it a hundred dollars, but if you wanted major money, you're going to have to have a, a lot more detailed plan. You know, it's going to have to be hundred percent. Yeah. We've already talked with the stars. They're on board, you know, da, 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 you know you've got to do all that because, you know, even grandma is not going to give you a lot of money if you can't tell grandma yes, you yes. know what's going to happen. Well, and what you just hit on is magic, right? Mm-hmm. Because the best business plan is momentum. Mm-hmm. You, you know, showing that something works. And you right. said, hey, you have to show that these actors are already on board, mm-hmm. right? Right. That's not a plan. That's something that that you had to go do. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. again, I think so many And folks, it can't just be they posted on Facebook, we'd like to do another show. Right, <laughs> I mean, right. They, know. They, they have to be truly <laughs> mm-hmm. committed. Mm-hmm. And this is something where I find that sometimes entrepreneurs, you know, aspiring mm-hmm. entrepreneurs struggle mm-hmm. is they feel they're treating the role of CEO Mm -hmm. or owner of a business, the Mm -hmm. same way they might be treated as Mm -hmm. an employee. Right. They're waiting for someone to say, I will give you X amount of dollars Mm -hmm. to go explore Mm -hmm. if this thing will work. Mm -hmm. And 
I've seen that type of investment happen many, many times. Mm -hmm. And it's typically given to people who have done that particular thing multiple mm -hmm. times. Right. At so they've huge, got a good track record of yeah, success. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you see it with film producers, you see it with, you know, software entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. you see it with real estate investors mm -hmm. because they've already done it. Mm -hmm. So if right. someone says, well, I haven't done that yet, mm -hmm. you're not going to get the benefit of the right. doubt um, where it's just like, mm -hmm. I made a PowerPoint mm -hmm. and this is a great idea. Mm -hmm. Here's some money. Uh, but back to why that's okay mm -hmm. is momentum is the best mm -hmm. business plan. And what you can do without money is go mm -hmm. figure out if customers want the mm -hmm. thing you you make. Right. And the, the the coaching that I give to all the folks that um, I talk to who are thinking about a new business mm -hmm. is you need to talk to a hundred people. Mm -hmm. Now, these could be um, potential customers. They could mm -hmm. be potential suppliers. They could be, if you have some type of distribution mm -hmm. channel, that's interesting, uh, potential distributors, like, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the class of your business from making physical product to selling digital things mm -hmm. to doing professional services, whatever you sell, it doesn't really matter, but mm -hmm. go talk to hundred people, mm -hmm. um, write summaries of all those interviews. And when I say mm -hmm. talk to hundred people, not like I did a survey on survey monkey mm -hmm. and they yeah, filled I posted out, it like, on Facebook. No, you go talk to people. A 15 mm -hmm. minute conversation is mm -hmm. okay. I'm not saying you have to go spend a day mm -hmm. with a hundred people, mm -hmm. but you need to talk to a hundred real humans mm -hmm. and start writing down what problems do they have. Mm -hmm. And you're not there to say, Hey, I want to sell cupcakes. Mm -hmm. You know, would you buy my cupcake? Right. What your job is to do is go talk to folks and say, Hey, um, I'm really interested in, you know, how people treat themselves mm -hmm. with a nice dessert. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about, you know, what type of dessert you mm -hmm. buy? Um, where do you buy it? How right. often? Mm -hmm. And through those conversations, you might find like, oh, everybody is buying this stuff at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. They're actually not going to mm -hmm. like a dedicated retail mm -hmm. store. Now, right. they're you just might getting a container of cupcakes yeah. that they walk past <laughs> in, in Kroger. And exactly. And it's, it's tempting to say, well, that's the opportunity. Mm hmm. Because nobody does it in a in a, re, or a dedicated mm -hmm. store, that's why we should do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, there's this concept of uh, spaghetti Sundays, mm -hmm. it's, where it's just like, uh, yeah, sure, nobody takes you know Italian pasta and mixes it with strawberry ice cream. Um, that's not a thing because no one wants it. Not right. not because yeah. like you 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 found mm -hmm. some type of secret mm -hmm. opportunity. Um, and so, if you have this commitment to talk to a hundred. Uh, people, mm -hmm. you're going to start finding those patterns. Right. Uh, the next benefit you get out of this is you are going to quickly burn through your friends and family. Mm -hmm. And so at seven people, 18 people, mm -hmm. 22 people, you're going to run out at some point. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be like, how do I go find the, the 23rd person? Mm -hmm. And it's going to force you to start thinking about how would I sell this? Mm -hmm. Like if I can't even find somebody right. to ask questions for 15 mm -hmm. minutes, Am I really going to be able to, and it's going to force mm -hmm. all the discomfort mm -hmm. on like, oh, getting people mm -hmm. to to pay attention to me is going to be hard. I mm -hmm. got to go build that muscle. So right. that's the second thing it does. And then third, it gets you to start um, thinking in a system. You're not going to have a hundred conversations mm -hmm. <clears throat> and just have like notes on a book, mm -hmm. some on a sticky note, right. some on your phone, like you could, but that's a mm -hmm. horrible way to run things. And mm -hmm. you'll quickly realize like, oh, if I want to mm -hmm. compile everything I'm learning from these hundred people, I, I need to go mm -hmm. put in a spreadsheet or whatever. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be expensive, mm -hmm. but you need a system. Mm -hmm. And so I say all this to say, um, getting started is cheap in dollars. It's expensive in time and right. courage. Mm -hmm. and, and courage to... is one of the key words there. Oh, folks. so, so mm -hmm. much. I mean, I, I had to tell myself this uh, many times early mm -hmm. in my journey because, you know, I, you know, from a book smart mm -hmm. standpoint, I'm a pretty smart person mm -hmm. um, that's objective, but I was punking out. I was, I didn't have courage. I was mm -hmm. like taking the safe route. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to come to the realization that courage trumps intellect. Mm -hmm. That's just, it's just, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be right. smart or we shouldn't value smart mm -hmm. people, but the courageous person will usually be more successful than the smart person. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the reason I believe that to be true is, you know, if anybody's out there thinking like, okay, I'm ready to start my business. Mm -hmm. I love the, the three levers uh, of observation. Mm -hmm. And when someone tells me a new business idea, I'm usually listening for this narrative. Mm -hmm. Number one, is there some behavioral change that has happened, you know, or a regulatory change that mm -hmm. has happened 
that's shifted the way the world uh, works, mm -hmm. right? So people used to love this type of hot dog. Mm -hmm. Now more people want a plant-based alternative. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and many of these things are pendulums. They're not, mm -hmm. it's one way, then the other way, and mm -hmm. it never changes. Mm -hmm. um, over years, it goes back and forth. Right. So is there a behavioral regulatory change? Mm -hmm. Number two, is there a... Um, uh, a vision of the world where you see this as an optimistic mm -hmm. or a pessimistic, you know, change, okay. right? So is this change good or bad? Mm -hmm. And, um, and then third, is this uh, something that is, so you got your compounding behavioral mm -hmm. change. You has, is, is this good or bad? Mm -hmm. um, do you believe it's good or bad? Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, as you tie all that together, do you believe that this is going to, um, kind of change uh and be be a kind of a durable um um mm -hmm. you know shift it's not like a temporary thing right. and if i look at ideas and i don't get a good handle that um those things are true mm -hmm. then i question it's like are you going are you chasing something mm -hmm. that will be around right in have five you years? have you gone after the bright shiny object 10 years right um or are you just sign you know solving like a short term mm -hmm. problem and for most people again when they go do mm -hmm. the dedicated one day deep dive, they'll mm -hmm. say, oh, I probably shouldn't start this business. Mm -hmm. um, if they go talk to their hundred folks, they might get to person 40 mm -hmm. and say, wow, I don't really know if I want to do this business. Mm -hmm. um, that could save you years of your life. Mm -hmm. It could save you tens of thousands of dollars. Right. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I watched this show called Kitchen Nightmares. It's a Gordon Ramsay show. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he goes in and it's so sad. I don't know if you've seen any of these, Deb, but <coughs> I have. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've seen the show, but that, that, you know, the punchline is like, there's some of these times it's like someone who has been on a working class salary, mm -hmm. they've saved up basically their whole mm -hmm. retirement and they go put a half a million dollars into a restaurant right. and it fails. And they have no clue really what they're doing. They just thought this sounds like a great thing to do. So the reason I'm, I'm so, so adamant about this number that can sound scary to people mm -hmm. of talk to a hundred humans mm -hmm. is that it will test your resolve mm -hmm. and it, you will discover what the true pain point mm -hmm. is. And the lovely side effect of all of this is you can go back to all of those people. You now have their email address right. and their phone number mm -hmm. and you can say, hey, I built this thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. sharing mm -hmm. you know, your feedback. And uh, this is this new product. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love for you to, to try it out. Mm -hmm. And depending on what you're selling, what I love to do is what's called a $1 contract. Um, and if you are making a consumer product, mm -hmm. um, what that means is go sell your product for $1. Now, if you say like, well, LaShawn, you know, I sell a coaching course and it's mm -hmm. it's $2,000 mm -hmm. or I sell this professional mm -hmm. service and it's $800. Well, if you have zero customers, it doesn't matter. Argue, <laughs> yeah, I would I would argue mm -hmm. the first one, two, three customers, you could go, mm -hmm. you should go sell that for mm -hmm. one dollar. Like and not right. give it to them for free. They right. need to mm -hmm. Venmo you, wire you, they need mm -hmm. to go through the pain of mm -hmm. sending you one dollar. Mm -hmm. Um, and what this forces is for you to figure out how do I get money into my mm -hmm. bank account? How do I like all these things, mm -hmm. you know, start you know, start helping right. you, but those people become your social proof. Right. And They're you your can brand say, ambassadors too. Yes, exactly. Your word of mouth. And so those are the individuals who now you can put on your website or get mm -hmm. a quote from, put in your mm -hmm. sales deck. And you don't have uh, to say you only sold it to them for a dollar. I mean, yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, you could say these are our pilot customers. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can like, there's all sorts of, of things in language right. that you can say. But the beauty there is you, you aren't starting with the product mm -hmm. and then figuring out who wants it. Right. You're going and you're out. you're working through the bugs. You're finding your tribe, you're finding mm -hmm, your people, mm -hmm. you're finding what pain points they have. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying, I solved this problem you mm -hmm. have. Um, would you like to pay me to solve it again? Mm -hmm. Are there other people you know who right. I could solve this for? Mm -hmm. And again, I just keep coming back to there are limiting beliefs mm -hmm. that many aspiring entrepreneurships mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneurs have mm -hmm. that money is what's stopping me. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, money is not stopping you. Right. If if you like LaShawn, knowing what I know now, I'm I've been in this this thing and with a lot of scuffs and scrapes mm -hmm. on you know my body uh, from falling down, you mm -hmm. know ideas that didn't work. Right. Um, if you took away my network, mm -hmm. you took away you know basically everything, um, but left me with good health. You left me with the skill set I have and a roof over my head. Mm -hmm. I could get back to a very mm -hmm. comfortable place in mm -hmm. short order. Um, because I know how to exercise and mm -hmm. this whole thing 
is like an exercise. Right, right. Well, and, you know, I think one of the big things that, you know, yeah, people, it's going to cost too much, all those various things. But you touched on this at the very start. I think one of the biggest things is what if I fail? Mm. You know, and you've got two options, really. You know, what if you succeed? I love it. You know, or if you fail, what are you going to learn from it? You know, right. and, 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 you know, we're not talking folks invest your house so that, you know, you're going to lose your house. I mean, just don't make some, some good business decisions, but we sometimes learn more from failing than we do with the, the successes, um, you know, yes. and, and, but yeah, I mean, it's, it really is. you got two well, options. You're going to fail or you're going to succeed. <laughs> yeah. And what we've been talking about mm-hmm. in kind of the middle of this conversation, I believe is tied to that. Mm-hmm. So when I hear people say, what if I fail? Number one, you're, you're, you're preaching to the preacher here. I love mm-hmm. that language. What if I, what if it goes right? What if I mm-hmm. succeed? So right. we have to remind ourselves of that. Mm-hmm. Number two, um, not only are you not betting the farm or betting mm-hmm. your house or what have you, um, if you're following the steps we just talked mm-hmm. about, you are getting so much data before right. you take mm-hmm. the next step. Mm-hmm. It's all a ramp. It's a progression. Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. I'm in or I'm right. out. Um, it is a ramp. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so even if you're very risk adverse, Mm -hmm. you will be able to figure out the right Mm -hmm. threshold for when to, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of move to the next level. Mm -hmm. And then third, I like to remind anyone, again, if someone says, well, I have life uh, responsibilities, Mm -hmm. I have this mortgage, I have kids, kids. yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I I have whatever. Um, Yes, if if someone with your same skill set has no life responsibilities Mm -hmm. outside of running a business um, and they are just as committed they will likely move faster in their business mm-hmm. than, than right. you. And right. like, it's not a popular thing to say, but like, yes, you can't, you know, being a parent is a job. Mm-hmm. Being in a relationship is a job. Mm-hmm. You can't say I have three jobs and, and mm-hmm. like magically um, the person who has only one job, um, you know, is going to do worse mm-hmm. than me. What people like to say is, well, I have good experience. Well, mm-hmm. there is someone who has no responsibilities who also mm-hmm. has the same experience as right. you or better. Mm-hmm. And and I don't think that we're in competition with any other anyone else. We're in mm-hmm. competition with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Right. And so even if you have those responsibilities, mm-hmm. there are still these graduated steps mm-hmm. you can take to de-risk it right. to determine if you mm-hmm. should go and dive into this. Mm-hmm. And if you're thinking long term, there might be activities that you're doing today mm-hmm. that you can stop mm-hmm. that give you the freedom. So right. uh for some folks, you know, they might say, hey, we we're going to take a vacation to Hawaii with the mm-hmm. kids. It's like, all right, get in your heart, your car and go drive somewhere local mm-hmm. and like figure out what the, the $800 vacation can mm-hmm. be. If you're spending quality time with your kids, mm-hmm. they'll have great memories. And like, you're still okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you're like, oh, we're not going to buy this new house. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're not going to do this remodel. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're not going to eat out as much. Like mm-hmm. there may be things that you can do both financially mm-hmm. and from a time investment right. standpoint, you know, my kryptonite is media. I love mm-hmm. to consume media, mm-hmm. YouTube, Netflix. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not ashamed of it. I mm-hmm. love it. Right. Um, but if I was starting, you know, if I was running a business mm-hmm. right now, I would basically cut out my media right. diet. Yeah. Um, or you'd say, okay, I'm going to do an hour a day. Yeah. Or, that's, or whatever yeah. yeah. You, mm-hmm. you have your, your own time allocation that Mm -hmm. works for you. And the the punchline there is you are in control of your destination. Mm -hmm. um, And the more you focus on problems that Mm -hmm. you control, uh, the more predictably Mm -hmm. you're going to find business success. Mm -hmm. And for folks who go back and forth, you know, I don't think entrepreneurship is for Mm -hmm. everyone. Right. But I do believe that entrepreneurship is one of the best vehicles for you to move through life without permission. Mm -hmm. And that's a great option. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh, LaShawn, this has just been so fascinating. And I think we've just scratched the surface on this um, yeah. because, you know, I always ask my guests for, for questions and we didn't cover anything that, that you had said. So you know, we just, we, we need, and you know, it all ties together, but we, yeah. we definitely do need to have you on again, but for people who went, okay, this sounds good for me. Now what? So Give us the now what, how do they reach you? You know, obviously, you know, you've got the book. Tell us, tell us the details on that. I'll give you the the very short version. Number one, I wrote a book called Values-Based Business Design. Mm -hmm. The punchline for folks who don't have time to read it is if you think about the values, Mm -hmm. the way you think about your personal values Mm -hmm. and you imbue those into your business Mm -hmm. and you defend those Mm -hmm. to the point that you're willing to go out of business to live those values Mm -hmm. in your business, 
you're going to attract and retain mm -hmm. a class of customers that other folks can't simply right. by advertising mm -hmm. or or kind mm -hmm. of paying their way into a quick mm -hmm. relationship. Number two, anyone who's an aspiring entrepreneur or early on their journey, uh, I do free coaching. Mm -hmm. um, I find that when I offer this, most folks don't take me up on it. So mm -hmm. anyone who is motivated, um, I'm like, like, please, mm -hmm. please reach out. Mm -hmm. And I just do 15 to 25 minute mm -hmm. sessions. I usually will do two sessions. Mm -hmm. um, there's no third magical session that I'm trying to sell you anything. Mm -hmm. I'm busy. I don't have a ton of time. Mm -hmm. But what I love, I get energized when people mm -hmm. are energized about something. Mm -hmm. And I'm always, you know, selfishly, what I get out of these in the short term is I'm always learning what's right. the pain point mm -hmm. that someone who's starting a business is going through. Mm -hmm. And I use that almost as a, like a mini focus mm -hmm. group mm -hmm. to kind of hear, is it mindset? Is it mm -hmm. capital? Is it clarity of strategy? Mm -hmm. Is it talent? There's going to be something. Mm -hmm. And then, so anyone who wants to do that, you can find me on, on Twitter. Um, I'm at, at LaShawn, L-A-S-C-A-N. You can mm -hmm. find me on LinkedIn. It's LaShawn Smith, S-M-I-T-H. And mm -hmm. those are great ways to just mm -hmm. kind of reach out. And then finally, if uh, you're a bit, further along in your journey, you're running a business mm -hmm. and you're looking for capital, or maybe you're thinking about selling your business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my, uh, my investment company is always looking for great people to partner mm -hmm. with. Cool. I love it. I love it. And like I said, you know, you've got this great website, LaShawn.com and, you know, and there's just, you know, there's, there's ways to sign up on there. You know, it's, it's worth it just to go and read your story because it is so much fun. Um, but I think when I read your story, what I thought was, wow, you're a human. Um, you know, and, and, and you've been through lots of different things. And I think, you know, I, it, that's one of the things that we, we tend to think about people is some, we put them on a pedestal. Right. And, right. um, you know, and, and then when we realize, oh, you know, you know, they're just like us, then we can, can, uh, reach out and, and really connect with somebody. And so I encourage people to, to look at your website. You know, this, this really has been so much fun and, you know, it's, it's, I hope that we at least piqued people's interest to think about, you know, I could do that. I could do that you because do they do like, we didn't even talk about why we need to have processes and systems and, and things sure. like that. But, you know, but I think people do need to realize it is not just, Ooh, I've got this great idea. It's I need to spend a day. Okay. Then I'm going to spend a week. Okay. Then, you know, and, and, you know, just kind of go through all of these things to get from, I've got this great idea to, Wow, this really works. I want I want to find out who did that with Pet Rocks. Really. I just, you know. Um, <laughs> there you go. It, but uh, but but yeah, I mean it's it is it has been such a fascinating discussion and and we do need to to do some more of it because it was really so much fun. Yeah, no, happy to to come back and I love your energy as I said. We all get positive energy when mm -hmm. we're kind of consuming positive energy mm -hmm. and that's I think requisite for success mm -hmm. for anyone who's thinking about right. starting a business mm -hmm. uh, venture. Right, right. Well, Ashan, do you have any final words of wisdom that you want to leave everyone with? I'll give you a really quick story. I was fortunate to have a um, a breakfast with Warren Buffett um, when I was in business school, and they invited the club presidents and a handful of other folks, and uh, we sat there. And you know, the story is longer, but the punchline was: I looked at this guy, and he seemed so regular. Mm -hmm. and he seemed to be very comfortable being himself. And I didn't look at that and say, oh, I could be Warren Buffett. But I looked at him and said, he figured out a way to win by being all the way himself. And the more I have internalized that and said, I'm going to be LaShawn, whether people like it or don't like it, um, the more I lean into that, the more I win. And if we give ourselves permission to be ourselves, I think we'll get much further. Oh my gosh. I love it. Such a, a great final thought to, to leave everyone with. I'm Deb Creer. I've been having a wonderful discussion with LaShawn Smith. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.